Welcome to Athletes Unlimited Pro Softball Fueled by Gatorade. It's a Saturday softball in the park here in Rosemont, Illinois. After a quick trip to North Carolina, AU softball returning to its roots. Parkway Bank Sports Complex. Let's play two. Our first game, it'll be Team Palacios taking on Team Kilfoyle. We have made it to week three, and folks, a little bit of a history lesson for you. Every past champion has been a captain going into week three. This week, our four captains, well, these are the women that have the crowns on their head. It is Amanda Lorenz, Lexi Kilfoyle, Sasha Palacios, and Taylor McQuillan. They're in the top four spots. That means that they are in the driver's seat as we move forward and finish this thing out to determine one true AU softball champion. Glad to have you along for the ride with my longtime partner, Danielle Lori. Uh, I am Eric Collins. We tried to start week three in Greenville, North Carolina a couple of days ago. Rain got in the way, game got halted. So we're going to play six games in three days here in Rosemont. This is the beginning of week three, which you think is ever so per uh, pivotal. Well, and you're kind of at that halfway point. So if the body is fatigue, any of those things, you've got to fight through that. But more importantly, if you want to make your way up the leaderboard, now is the time. If you haven't been playing the way you feel like you should be playing, so it's important for those players to rise to the occasion because everyone wants to be the top dog. No doubt about it. Sashel Palacios, how about her story? This is Sashel's fifth year playing AU softball. It's her first time, Danielle, as a captain. And I couldn't be more just proud of Sashel for her grind. I mean, she's been playing with Athletes Unlimited since that inaugural season back in 2020. And for her to just be able to put up numbers and be consistent this last year, she has been so good. So for her to get that captain nod is pretty special. But more importantly, she's getting to play with her sister, who was a rookie this year, Charlize, coming from UCLA. So pretty cool moment for those sisters. All right, ready to go, folks. Let's take a look at Sasha Palacios' lineup card. She has Aubrey Leach leading things off, followed by Sis Bates, who's on a six-game heater. Haley McClenney in the three-hole. The Palacios sisters hit four and five. Sam Fisher, Kaylee Harding, Andrea Filler, and Morgan DeBoard rounding out the nine. Let's talk about the pitcher for Team Kilfoyle, Lexi Kilfoyle. I mean, can you say enough about this young lady? I mean, this rookie coming in, she has just been phenomenal. Taking the world by storm here with that consistency from Oklahoma State over here to Athletes Unlimited. She is, I mean, the numbers don't lie, she's one of the best. She has thrown 24 innings and not allowed a homer. She's been remarkable. Kilfoyle currently number two on the leaderboard, trailing only Amanda Lorenz. Aubrey Leach the batter. One ball, one strike to Leach. Leach beginning the day, 42nd out of 60 players on the leaderboard. Real good start for her with a batting average, hitting close to 400. Seven hits and 18 at bats. Four runs batted in. I think the thing that stands out for me with Lexi Kilfoy has just been the attention to detail on location of her pitches. And she's going to get at times a little bit of, of a Solid strike zone here in Athletes Unlimited, but she keeps the ball in the yard because she's down and can combo it with that off speed pitch. I mean, that's filthy. You see the lower half movement of Aubrey Leach just completely fooled with the 2 1 change. Two balls and two strikes. So change up to velocity, and it's outside for ball three three and two well lexi throws hard i mean she's touching 68 70 miles an hour but when you combo with that type of change the velo can feel even hotter as a hitter now one thing that kilfoyle has done well is throw consistent strikes in those 24 innings of work coming into today just four walks so you can bet your bottom dollar this is going to be a strike here to leach Center field, that'll get down. Solid single for Leach. Hayward, her throw is off the mark, and look at the hustle of Leach. That's a hustle double. 20 points right out of the shoot for Aubrey Leach. This is solid leadoff by Aubrey Leach. She works it to a 3-2 count, but it's the location of this pitch. Bleeds back over the heart of the plate. Aubrey Leach on time. Takes it right back hard up the middle, utilizes her speed, gets to second base. 
that's what you want from your leadoff hitter. You want to see him work that pitcher, pass the baton to that next hitter in Sis Bates. And this is a perfect opportunity for Sis Bates. Handles the bat as well as anyone in the pro game. Currently in the six game hitting streak. She is seven for 19. Hits this one into the gap in right center field, and this one will get down. This will easily score Leach, and it's back to back doubles for Team Palacios. Great offensive start for Team Palacios. Back to back doubles, they lead one to nothing. Um, both these hitters are just on point, and they're not allowing that pitch that's missed over the heart of the plate to get by them. And that's really what it comes down to. When you face a pitcher like Lexi Kilfoyle, if she misses, you have to be ready. When she's spot on with her location on the corners with the down spin, she's tough. But those back-to-back -back doubles are causes of pitches that are just too fat over the heart of the plate. So Sis Bates in scoring position, still nobody out. She passes the baton to Haley McClenney. Off-speed pitch of beauty. One ball and one strike to McClenney. History for Haley today. This is her 100th game here with Athletes Unlimited. Only Morgan Circle has played more than Haley McClenney. We get a chance to talk to Haley throughout the course of the game. Get her thoughts on this historic afternoon. Two balls and a strike. Off the end of the bat. I also think when you think about week three, Eric, you think about the adjustments that these hitters are going to want to try to make off of a pitcher like that, right? Like you look at week one, week two, Lexi Kilfoyle, absolutely money. And probably a little bit ignorance is bliss at this point, right? These hitters haven't really got a chance to see her. But week three, the adjustments that they're trying to make, going to try to have a different approach, seeing her in this third week. Ground ball should be the first out of the game, and it is not. The throw is wide. Skylar Wallace off the mark, and everyone's going to be safe. Runners on at the corners with nobody out. No mistake defensively behind Kilfoyle. Well, and when you get the opportunity to get these little outs, you want to make that happen. Kelsey Stewart Hunter does everything she can, tries to apply the tag, but some big things going here for Team Palacios. So that scored an error on the shortstop, Skylar Wallace, so no hit for McClenney. If McClenney does come around and score, that wouldn't be an earned run against Lexi Kilfoyle. Charlize Palacios takes up high. Charlize, one homer, three runs batted in. Heading right on the cusp of 300, 294. Five hits and 17 at bats. Off speed pitch, called strike. Uncharted waters for Lexi Kilfoyle. Usually very little traffic behind her. Plenty the runner on at first. She's got good wheels. Oh boy. When climbing the ladder and trying to be a little bit different, right? And we know that Lexi Kilfoyle is primarily down in the zone. She has that change up, just trying to see if she can get a little body movement by Charlize Palacios. I wonder if she'll come back with the change. Foul back to the screen. We'll do it again. You're seeing these hitters work good counts, see a lot of pitches, and I think at this point, these are the little things that can wear a pitcher down. As a hitter, your goal is to step in the box and really make a pitcher work, give your team information. Another 3-2. Now we don't have an out in our ball game. 
And the pitch count is already starting to rack up for Lexi Kilfoyle. Second batter, she's gone to 3 2. She began the game with a 3 2 count to Aubrey Leach, who got the double. Then the double by Sis Bates. McClenny reaching on an error by the shortstop. And now we're on the 3 2 pitch coming to Charlize Palacios. And it misses. So the first four batters of the game have all reached successfully against Kilfoyle. Bases loaded, nobody out. And it'll be captain against captain. Lexi Kilfoyle will pitch against Sashiel Palacios. And we did not expect to see activity in the bullpen already for Team Kilfoyle. But Peyton Gottschall is picking up a ball. Here's Sashiel Palacios, her fifth and final season with Athletes Unlimited. She's announced her retirement, and what an honor for her to have a C on that shoulder, signifying that she's a captain for the first time, got a chance to draft her own team, and wouldn't you know it, she drafted her sister and put her in the lineup right in front of her. Well, and even getting the chance to see her yesterday with her sister, like you could tell there was this different excitement. The fact that she gets to lace up and be on the same team, especially knowing her retirement, right? And every single game is one game less that you're going to get to lace up. So special moment. On the ground could be two. Nope, they decided to get just the one at first. And that's the first out of our ball game. It's an RBI ground out as Bates scores the second run of the inning. And I thought for sure, Eric, this was going to be a double play. Charlize has speed. She can get to second, but this was kind of a little bit of a hot shot to Skylar Wallace. I thought there was definitely a lot of time. Here's Sam Fisher, another veteran. Sam takes called strike one. Sam beginning week three, 45th on the leaderboard. 45th out of 60 players. Quickly, two strikes. <laughs> Haley McClenny playing in her 100th Athletes Unlimited game. Sam Fisher knocking on that door. She's been a part of every Athletes Unlimited season here in Chicago. Knocks her to her knees. He's getting a stretch in. <laughs> we'll Tried to start this uh, week three, Wednesday. Down in Greenville, North Carolina, actually got an inning in, but then the rain just wouldn't stop. Hurricane Debbie, big factor on the East Coast this week. So game was halted. We'll actually pick that game up on Monday. We're going to play through the weekend, wraparound weekend here of softball. Down the right field line. Kowalik makes the play. That's the second out. Tagging from third and scoring is McClenny. It's a sacrifice fly RBI off the bat of Sam Fisher, and the lead is three to nothing for Team Palacios. And this is a good piece by Sam Fisher. I mean, this is a one-two pitch on the outer half. She goes with it. I mean, Kayla Kowalik makes a great catch out and right, but runners on base. Is there a ribby opportunity? Three nothing here for Team Palacios. Sacrifice flies score. At points to your totals, so Sam Fisher picks up a plus 10. Very professional at bat for Sam Fisher. Drove in a run and added points to her total without getting a base hit. Here's the rookie, Kaylee Harding. Good changeup. Harding, three hits and 16 at bats.
down the right field line and foul. So this will end the inning for Kilfoyle, at least for stat purposes. Remember, there was an error by the shortstop Skylar Wallace that allowed McClenney to reach first base safely. So that, if you add all the thing up, that should have been three outs. And so the inning should be over. So none of these runs, if anything else scores, would be earned against her. Oh, my goodness. That's a swing, and the ball actually goes off of Harding. Did she foul it or did it just go directly off of her body? This definitely does not feel good, but wondering if it touched that bat at all. Because it must have touched the bat because yeah, it was a one two pitch. Yeah. If you swing through a pitch with two strikes and get hit, it, it is an out, but. Yeah, yeah. clearly. But just solid location by Lexi Kilfoyle. This pitch is just up and in. Good lights by Harning. That pitch coming in at her sets up that low and away, which is a bread and butter pitch for Lexi Kilfoyle. Solid eye. Kilfoyle came in to this game, allowing just three earned runs in the first two weeks. Three earned runs in 24 innings. She's given up two earned runs and three total runs here in the first inning today. And she's racking up a pitch count on the first day of week three. When you're just seeing the adjustments these hitters are making by not swinging at pitches way out of the zone and having that good eye, and that really has been the difference here, game one of week three, compared to the last couple weeks. 38th pitch of the inning on the ground, ranging to her left is McKinney, and Harding is the third out. But an eruption for Team Palacios. They scored three times against Lexi Kilfoyle. When we come back, Team Kilfoyle heading to the bat rack. Going to get a chance to see Team Kilfoyle bat for the first time. Skylar Wallace has been really good. Rookie so far this year has hit everything in sight. Yeah, she's been electric. Been able to utilize her speed game. I mean, she's got the power. We've seen the grand slam. That's all that you can ask for, especially with her in that two spot, right? She is that triple threat type of player. Wallace will hit in the number two hole in the team Kilfoyle lineup. The veteran Victoria Hayward leads things off, hitting a robust 333 on the year. Sydney Romero hits third. Claire Davidson, Taylor Edwards in the fifth spot. Kelsey Stewart, Hunter, Bailey Klingler, Sydney McKinney, and Kayla Kowalik hits ninth. Georgina Korik in the circle. Korik's first pitch, a steamer called strike one to Hayward. Well, Georgina Korik has always been impressive in every season she's played here with Athletes Unlimited. Good start this year. And she's somebody you can put out there and you can rely on. Has that good vet presence. I mean, just even looking at last weekend, game two, I mean, earned herself 234 points and through her second career AU complete game. That's really tough to do in this league. Throw seven innings against these hitters. Into left field. Lead off single for Victoria Hayward. What's new? She's been doing that for five seasons here as a pro with Athletes Unlimited. She now has eight hits for the first seven games of her season. This is a good job of going with a pitch. This is not a bad spot by Georgina Korik. Just Victoria Hayward goes with it. It's her barrel out there, throws it at it. It's a good piece of hitting. So Vic can run. One stolen base so far on her season. Skylar Wallace 
ball one. This is what makes this one-two punch pretty dangerous with Vic and her speed, but corners have to keep honest with maybe that potential bun. This is why you put those types of players back to back with each other, right? Because speed kills and just puts that extra pressure on the defense, makes it tough. Uh-oh. Three balls, no strikes. And we'll have a meeting in the circle. The captain, Sasha Palacios, wants to discuss things with Corrick. Well, the one thing I've taken note of from last inning and this inning is you saw Taylor Edwards call timeout for Lexi Kilfoyle when stuff was going down. You see the same thing here by Sachel Palacios. I just think there is this intuition you have to have as a catcher to be able to connect and realize when things are cha changing, the temperament, the breathing, all the things. Taking all the way, it's a four-pitch walk to Skylar Wallace. Runners at first and at second. Let's hear from Georgina Cork herself about the pitches she throws. Hi, my name is Georgina Korik, and my favorite pitch to throw is my changeup because it makes all my other pitches look way faster than they are. Romero tries a little bunt. Wasn't pretty, but it works. Popped it up in the air. Almost thought it was going to get caught, but it'll go down as a sacrifice. Give 10 points to Sidney Romero, and runners move to second and third with one out. It's a really good job by Sachel Palacios to get up right away. Knows the corners are in, but it's a faster angle with where her body's at to get a good solid throw up the line. Some things in motion here for Team Kilfoyle. Another impressive rookie, Claire Davidson, grabs a bat. Davidson in the top 20% of the leaderboard. She's 12th out of 60 players. Seven hits and 15 at bats. Good golly. You'll just have some of those rookies that come in and just see it well. Just it rolls over from college and those consistent ABs right into the championship season. I mean, she has just been a tough out. And someone you want on your team when you are that captain, you have the ability to draft. She's high on that list. Davidson played four years, Durham, North Carolina. Marissa Young was her head coach at Duke, culminating with a trip to the Women's College World Series this past spring. Originally from Alexandria, Virginia, just outside of D.C. Skies this one into the air. There's a lot of wind today. McClenny knows this facility really well. Makes a catch, throw to plate, not in time. A run scores. Victoria Hayward plates the first run for Team Guilfoyle. So a sacrifice for Davidson, a plus 10 for her. What a good attempt by Haley McClinney. You see the tag at third. McClinney getting her body behind this throw. Like you said, she knows this field well. This was close, but you put the bunnies at the top of the lineup for a reason. They have that much speed that came to play there for Victoria Hayward in a three-one ball game. Very giving first inning. We've had a combined three sacrifices. Sacrifice fly for each side and the sacrifice bunt by Sidney Romero. Taylor Edwards lifts it foul. 0-2 to the veteran Edwards. So Team Palacios is hoping for an inning win, which would be plus 10 for everyone on their side. They scored three times in the top of the first inning, not trying to hang on here in the bottom of the first. Good spot by Corrick, that 0-2 off-speed pitch. I mean, both these pitchers that are in this ballgame, Lexi Kilfoyle, Kilfoyle, excuse me, Georgina Corrick, the changeup is a go-to pitch. 
The lover tons of spin fielded by Corrick and the side is retired. A run does score for Team Kilfoyle, but they lose the inning. Team Palacios in inning win, plus 10 for everyone in that dugout. Athletes Unlimited Pro Softball is fueled by Gatorade. Athletes Unlimited Softball was down in Greenville, North Carolina early this week. Uh, Doubleheader was halted, couldn't play it, but uh, all was not lost. There still was a lot of fun, positive memories made. Uh, second consecutive year, Athletes Unlimited heading to Little League Softball World Series. And it wasn't just all about the pro game, it also was about youngsters. And there was still that that happened despite the rain and the game being halted. Yeah, as much as those young little leaguers want to sit in the stands and watch the pros do it right. I think that connection piece and getting to hang out is so important for them, like getting to talk to these players, hear stories on both ends. You know, those little leaguers are sharing stories with the pros as well. So obviously sad that those games didn't get to go on, but they got a, they did get a lot of good time together. Lexi Kilfoyle, Danielle, threw 38 pitches in the first inning. Andrea Filler is the batter, hits this one on the ground. Third baseman Romero across the diamond, out number one. All right, time now to join the third member of our crew, Savannah Collins. No relation. Savannah, what's going on? <laughs> hey, Eric, no relation. That's right, although we do a ton of games together, but just heading into this week and seeing Lexi Kilfoyle lead a team for the second time, there's some things that she feels like she's learned stepping into this role again. Last week when she put together her team, being a ground ball pitcher, she was ultra-focused on defense. Felt like she needed really solid defenders behind her. But what she feels like she's learned is that everybody in this league is a stellar defender. That's not something that really drops off position to position because these athletes are pros. So she did have a little bit of a shift to offense. She looked at the stats, who's hot right now, who's really had some great at-bats and been on a good hitting streak. So she made some changes to her team, although she has seven returning players from last week. And when it comes to those, she says, hey, when you're on a roll, when you got something that's going good, let's stick with those same relationships and obviously the non-negotiable is who she has behind the plate in Taylor Edwards. She has been her go-to all season and needs her as she takes over these teams. Non-negotiable. Taylor Edwards, I love that. Thank you, Savannah. And a big hand. How about Carly Spade? Maybe no one more loved here in the Chicagoland area than Carly Spade played at Lane Tech just down the road. Gets herself her first AU championship season base hit with a line drive to right field. Well, a first pitch swing in, knowing that a pitcher that may be struggling a little bit with a higher pitch count wants to come right at you. Solid base hit for Carly Spade. Spade smoked that one. 79.4 miles per hour off the bat. Mentioned that she is local, local, local. Not from one of these many suburbs here in Chicago. She is a city kid. Played at Lane Tech. Starred at Miami. Congratulations, Carly Spade. First AU championship season base. Back to the top of the order, Aubrey Leach. Fitting that uh, you got Leach and Spade going back to back. Carly Spade is actually replacing Aubrey Leach as a grad assistant at Tennessee. Leach played at Tennessee and then a grad assistant as she got her law degree. Carly Spade is not going to law school, but uh, still, anyway, it's going to be done in Knoxville. And that's actually where Miami. Uh, of Ohio ended up for the regionals playing at Tennessee. I remember Madison Shipman got that regional thinking just home run central. Harley Spade was phenomenal this year with just what she was able to do. I mean, number two all time home runs just behind the home run queen, Jocelyn Allo. Pretty special. Two balls and two strikes to Leach. Leach stays alive. Leach began our ball game with a hustle double into the gap in right center field. Scored on the double by Sis Bates. On the ground, foul. 
Well, just to continue to go off of what Savannah Collins was talking about with just the importance of drafting kind of some of those returners, but more importantly, that battery. We've seen the importance of having someone behind the plate that you can truly rely on and help you through it. And Lexi Kilfoyle has found that with Taylor Edwards, just such a calming presence behind the dish. You could say that with all the catchers in this league, they really are just on point with that connection. And it can be a hard gig at times for them. If they're constantly rotating different pitchers, they really have to get to know these pitchers sooner than later. In the left field, sinking, and that'll get down. That's the second consecutive inning that Aubrey Leach has had a 3-2 count and ended up getting a base hit against Kilfoyle. So she's clearly seeing the ball very well right now. When she does such a good job of being able to foul off pitches that she wants nothing to do with, and when she gets one that she can, she just pokes it to left field. This is a pitch that's up in the zone, just throws her barrel at it. Sis Bates. Shortens, takes high. With that double an inning ago, Sis Bates now has a league high seven game hitting streak. A double was her first extra base hit on the year. Didn't like that call. Sis is someone you want to play poker against. Very emotional player. Little bunt. That's a beauty. Oh, my goodness. Romero just had to put it in her back pocket. Sneak attack bunt. And Sis Bates is two for two this afternoon. And this is just exposing the corners all day. Sid Romero, Kelsey Seward Hunter, they're all the way back. And this makes it tough. And this one-two punch as well with Aubrey Leach and Sis Bates is hard because of that speed and that triple threat game that they both have. McClenny on the ground. Play is at first. And there are now two outs, but a run does score. Spade comes around and makes it a 4-1 lead for Team Palacios. Palacios family is in the house. Mom and dad, they were telling us yesterday, was today their grandmother's birthday who had passed away, but it's a big celebration for them and an exciting day for them to have their parents here, rocking the cool swag. Love it. <laughs> they have to cheer for the same team, which makes it good. <laughs> they're both playing on it. One ball and one strike to Charlize. Walked an inning ago. It's a good pitch. It's a pitch as a hitter I don't want to hit, but as a pitcher, if you can continue to keep getting that down and in call, makes everything that much harder to hit and opens up pitches in different quadrants. Charlize has got that lower left hand wrapped all the way around the knob of the bat. Like, see, it looks, actually looks almost uncomfortable to me. Yeah, you see the lower finger actually off the knob of the bat. Good pitching by Kilfoyle. Strikes out Palacios. That is her first strikeout of the game. But a run does score. Spade scores on this RBI ground out by McClenny. It's a 4-1 lead for Team Palacios. So far, so good for Team Palacios. They lead 4-1 over Team Kilfoyle. As per usual, Haley McClenny has been right in the middle of everything for her team. Haley McClenny in the middle of the outfield, as always, center field for Team Palacios. She has already scored a run and driven in a run in today's game. And how about this? History is on her side. She's playing in her 100th Athletes Unlimited game. We were going to talk to Haley uh, this half inning. Actually, how about right now? Haley, can you hear us? I got you guys. How you guys doing? Hey, the great Haley McClain. Uh, we got to ask you, just 
news of the day. When? Yeah. What's it like out there in center field? It's uh, it's definitely moving today. I mean, you can see the flags just running all around. Normally, when you're now, but you need to pick up some grass, but we're on turf, so I feel like I keep turning my head around just to make sure it's all running in the same direction. But uh, it's windy out here, windy and bright. When you have a day like today with that wind, like how do you have to play it? Like if little guys are watching right now, like what type of advice in a situation like this as an Audi? Yeah, I mean, champions adjust, right? I think that's the coolest part about softball is we're an outdoor sport, so we've got to fight all of the elements all of the time. Um, but really, when you're dealing with the wind, you just got to pay attention to the direction and then try to best gauge the miles per hour. Um, it's a lot easier said than done, especially here in Chicago, where all of a sudden it just switches um, and swirls. But yeah, I would just say get a good read off the bat and do your best to catch it. There have been some really fun center fielders to watch over the years. Laura Berg back in the 90s, early 2000s. Caitlin Lowe, more recent vintage. I consider you to be on par defensively with the best of the best. What do you think is the best thing that you do defensively that allows you to be the defender that you are? Yeah, that, I mean, that means a lot for me to be even mentioned in those categories with like Laura Berg's my hero. Um, Caitlin Lowe, also a hero of mine and got to spend a lot of time with them um, when I was playing with Team USA. And I think, you know, um, I just, I hope people appreciate an outfielder's first step. I think that's one thing that I always try to be really consistent with is not over anticipating, but anticipating at the right time of, you know, what does the batter swing look like? What are foul balls telling me? What is the pitcher's spin telling me? Because um, people hit the ball so different off of each pitcher. And I just want to make sure my first step is, is quick, it's correct. And then it's really explosive and sets me up to be able to cover a lot of ground. Three balls and two strikes to Stuart Hunter, and she wastes that one foul. We'll do it again. Haley, this is your last go round, and with Sam Fisher, she's one of your loyal homies. You guys are buddies. You're in it together. Yeah. Just talk about just kind of that relationship and how special it is that you guys are going out together and on the same team. Just little things like that. Yeah, it's cool. It's a really full circle moment, I think, for for both of us. Um, Sam's one of my best friends and um, one of the best friends I think that anyone could ever have and for us to be able to you know she was one of my first teammates when I ever put on the USA uniform in 2014 and for us to be able to play together for the last 10 years uh, just really special I know I got a lifelong friend in 52 over there and um, she's just an absolute pleasure to play with work with um, and I'm really grateful for that friendship that we have. Bailey Klingler is the batter runner on a first nobody out. Haley, I vividly remember back in 2020, the first year of Athletes Unlimited, uh, when we finished week five, you made a big point of making sure everyone got together and understanding the people who were going to move on and retire. Mm -hmm. And it was important for you um, to pull people aside and say, let's honor these yeah. people who have meant so much to this season in this game. Um, what's it going to be like for you as you finish up your career and put your shoes down on home plate? Oh, man, you're going to make me sob in the middle of the game, Eric. <laughs> um, you know, I, the only thing that comes to my mind, really, to be honest with you, is just gratitude. I mean, I'm so thankful every time I get to put on a jersey and go out here and play, and um, I get paid to do this, which is absolutely crazy. Um, but just to be able to compete ball, with these women, ball. to continue to grow the game, I think that's what I'm most grateful for is I feel like me, Sam, Sashell, a lot of this older group, Megan Wiggins, um, we've carried the torch for these rookies and this rookie class to come in and shine. And I think the best is yet to come for not only this rookie class, but for the generations to come in professional softball. Was there anything going into this last run here in the champ season that you wanted to do different or be different at or set any type of different goals besides trying to you know, win the whole thing at the end. We all want that. But was it trying to be a little bit more present, knowing every game is one game closer to being done? Yeah, for sure. I think I, I always try to stay present in the moment in general, but I think this year it's been um, kind of a challenge just with everything going on and, you know, the retirement and all of that stuff. I just really want to make sure that I don't take a single moment for granted. I never felt like I have anyway, but I just really want to be mindful of, you know, am I pouring into my teammates? Am I setting my team up for success? Am I sharing information? Go, sister! That's money. That girl, sis. With that uh, wind, that's That money. wind is tough, yeah, and that's pushing it right back towards her, too, so it's great. Um, but yeah, just stay, stay in present and trying to be a good teammate. Haley, I love watching your swing, your energy, uh, but also your competitive nature. Just after watching you for so many years, 
what are you going to do to get your competitive juices going oh, Lord, uh, in the years mercy. to come if you're not going to be out in center field playing pro Man, softball? Man, that's a phenomenal question. Um, I don't think competitiveness is something that I don't I don't think ever goes away. I'm sure I'll find something to do. I told I was telling Sam yesterday in the car. I think I'm I'm scared. I'm going to turn into my dad a little bit because my dad's like a triathlon runner and goes on these like elaborate runs after working outside all day. He's a contractor. I have a feeling I'm going to get into running, maybe get into some pickleball, golf. I mean, I live in Florida, so I feel like I got to say golf. That's like a good <laughs> retirement activity. Um, but that competitiveness and that spirit really never dies. So I'm, I'm you know what? That's a good question, Eric. I'm going to write that in my journal later and see if I can come up with an answer myself. And I'm just curious, how many, you're, you're wearing a glove that you've seems like a natural part of you. Yeah. How many gloves do you think you've had over the years? <laughs> oh my, the limit does not exist. <laughs> it was, it's funny because I actually didn't have a lot of gloves until like I got to college because I'm left-handed and there was like, it was so hard to get a left-handed glove. So I used the same one when I was in middle school, high school, like I never parted ways with it. Make a play, turn that, come on, get her, get her. Oh, rats. Outs recorded at first. That's some good base running in there by Stuart Hunter. Yeah. She knew that the out was recorded at first, and she was able to double back once the force was taken off. Two. Good job. Kelsey Stewart's one of the best base runners that's ever played softball, honestly. Me just sitting up here, you know, when I hit a little in college, I don't know if I would have made that move. I mean, she's thinking it right away, sees that that tag is applied yeah. to first, knows she can get back. Yeah, George. I think the one thing that, that I have for you is just thinking about the rookies and this class of rookies coming into year five. Is there anyone that stands out that you've connected with a little bit Man. this champ season? You know, I've, I've gotten to play with Mackenzie Clark the past two weeks. She's not on my team this week. Um, but I, just, I love the energy that she plays with. She's gritty. Um, played for Coach Rittman at Clemson, and Coach Rittman was one of my first coaches with Team USA as well. And um, I just think she's really special. I think Skylar Wallace is really special. I am so excited that Kayla Beaver is here getting some professional experience as well. Um, I mean, the, the cool part about this is this whole class, like I'm playing my 100th game today, and I was telling Morgan to board Spade and, and Harding, I'm like, I can't wait for you guys to have this moment, because I really believe like this class is a testament to, and it's written on my glove, like the best is yet to come, the best is yet to come for all of them, um, and for, for softball in general. I'm excited to see what the future holds. And Haley, my last question, just curious, I don't know if you can see it on center field, but Kayla Kowalik, who's in the batter's box, she has her hands apart about two inches on the back. Yeah. When you see that, does that, what does that mean for a hitter? What are you trying to do there? A lot of people with split grips just have really good back control and they can kind of place balls wherever they want it to go. Oh, make that play. Go Harding, go Harding. Good, out of way. Great stuff. And thank you, Haley. Yeah, thank you guys. Have love watching you play. Day. We're gonna love watching you play for the next two weeks. We're not gonna take anything <laughs> for granted. Thank you guys. Halo, Haley McClenney. It's another inning win for Team Palacios. We'll come back to Rosemont in a moment. So far, so good for Team Palacios. They win the first inning plus 10. They win the second inning plus 10. And they lead overall 4-1 to one as we play the third. Lexi Kilfoyle had been magnificent in the first two weeks of Athletes Unlimited's championship season, but uh, a totally different game for her so far today. Well, uh, and adjustments by hitters for sure, but I also think sometimes you're not always going to have your best stuff. And when you're facing this type of parity as far as the hitters in this league, when you make mistakes, they make you pay. And that's what you saw, especially the kick off the inning, those back-to-back -back doubles. When you miss over the heart of the plate, big things happen. Uh, I also think they're not really chasing at as many pitches out of the zone with that drop spin. The captain, Sasha Palacios, can't hit it any harder. Absolutely smokes it in center field, but into the glove of Victoria Hayward. One pitch, one loud out. Well, Danielle, something that Lexi Kilfoyle needs to be cognizant of. She's a rookie, but she's also a captain. She's the one who's going to determine how long she pitches. And if she really doesn't feel like she's got great stuff, I think she needs to be honest with herself because the last thing you want to do is give up a ton of earned runs and just crush your standing on the leaderboard. Well, and you have to be able to connect with someone on your team that's going to help you make those decisions. Because I remember back in 2020, you remember Kat would say, hey, when I'm pitching, I don't want to be making those types mm. of decisions. I want the facilitator to really be able to help me or connecting with a teammate that can kind of give you some feedback and information. 
on the ground. Sam Fisher bounces to Wallace. Two down. Let's check in with Savannah. Well, Danielle, you're exactly right of Kilfoyle just having to adjust and know what to do as the hitters start to understand her better. She talked about last week in her second game of the competition just how she felt like she wasn't hitting her spots. And she knows in this league that you can't get by on that. These hitters are going to capitalize on your every single mistake. She knows that if she needs to, she needs to go back in the bullpen in between innings and just warm up or just get it right. And that she cannot give these hitters a good pitch to hitch, hit or it will put her in trouble. She's given up four runs, but only three of them were earned. For pitchers, every earned run is a negative 10. Kaylee Harding. Now this has been an efficient inning so far for Kilfoyle. She's only thrown five pitches. She's already got two outs, and she's got Harding set up 0-2. But I really do think it comes down to when you are pitching, it's like, hey, I need someone to kind of maybe come and give me a little shoulder tap. Maybe it's time to go to the pen, right? Because sometimes when you're out there, to be able to make all of those other decisions with everything going on can be tough. And I feel like if I were playing, that I would definitely be like my teammate that's going to be able to help me or the facilitator and say, hey, if, you, if you're really feeling something, call time, come out, and let's make the change. But then you have an inning where you're a lot more efficient and you're like, hey, maybe you're just needing a couple to get some some pitches under your belt. And that's really what it comes down to. You can't, as a rookie, it is very tough to come into this league and every single weekend just absolutely dominate. You're going to go through the ebbs and the flows and get humbled and be great. It's hard. Off the glove of the shortstop, Wallace. That's a good at bat for Harding. He's down to the count 0-2, had a couple foul balls. It smokes a base hit to left field. Now six hits allowed by Kilfoyle. And Andrea Filler will bat with two outs in the third. Already a season high for hits allowed by Kilfoyle. We've seen Lexi Kilfoyle expand that zone a little bit more than maybe you have over the first couple weeks with pitches that are up. Just Trying to elevate the eyes a little bit, knowing she's primarily down. Oh, it's the second time today we've seen that happen. A foul ball off the batter. Kaylee Harding did it back in the first inning, and now Filler does it here in the third. as a pitcher I'm going right back to that spot knowing it hurts <laughs> and you want to try to make them do that again it's uncomfortable and there's a good chance that they're probably not going to do anything with it because they don't want it back on their leg but just back to back really good spots on the inner half but potentially opens up something if she wants to go back in or that down and away pitch at that one two count Filler from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Knows all about Chicago, though. Played at Northwestern. Was a pro here in Chicago for the Chicago Bandits. Now in her third season with Athletes Unlimited. Wallace fields and fires. Side is retired. Two out base hit by Harding goes by the wayside. Still a 4-1 lead for Team Palacios. to AU Pro Softball. Team Palacios leading four to one in the bottom of the fourth. With a five and a half year age gap, Sachelle and Charlize Palacio never quite lined up to play on the same team that is until today. But this game special beyond just that as they remember their late grandmother, Lorenza Barajas. Born in Sinaloa, Mexico and spending her life in San Diego, she grew up in traditional Mexican culture where she didn't really see women play sports in a especially didn't see them pursue their dreams at this competitive of a level. But through her close bond with Sachelle and Charlize,
Chase, she supported their dream. And she became a huge softball fan. In fact, she would record their college games because she was too nervous to watch them live. She would go back and watch them when she knew they won. She passed away a year and a half ago, and today is her birthday. She would be 80 years old today. She may have been too nervous to watch their games live but when she was here, but Sachel and Charlize know they have a fan watching them right now and looking over them this season. What an excellent story. Thank you so much, Savannah. Wow. Gosh, special weekend just got even more special. 80th birthday. Mm. And that actually gets Victoria Hayward. All right, Vic. That's eight points. Hit by pinch and a leadoff batter aboard here in the fourth inning for Team Kilfoy. Make it third inning. There are the parents of Sachel and Charlize. Dad played professional ball, got drafted by the Cleveland Indians back in the 90s. Spent some time playing minor league baseball and clearly passed that love on to Sachel and Charlize. Oh, look at Vic go. Frisky. Out at second base. What a great throw by Palacios. That throw was like it was shot out of a bazooka. This was an absolute missile down to two. It's just the little things. They mean so much. Love the excitement. Vic's got a ton of speed. Was one for two in stolen bases, but just on the money with the quick tag. Beautiful tag by, by Bates. Bates. Yep. Yeah. So Victoria Hayward got the plus eight for getting hit by the pitch and then gives back 10 for getting caught stealing. Little looper in the right field, and the wind plays havoc oh. with it. Harding able to stay with it. That ball <laughs> almost escaped her. And it's out number two. That is a rookie trying to navigate the wind <laughs> here in Rosemont. Finding a way to adjust. You see her run in and then have to go back. It is a difficult thing to be an outfielder. In Athletes Unlimited playing on this field, it's swirling, it's going nonstop. So to be able to step up in those big moments, because off the bat, it looked like that was an easy just fly, but not exactly. Great catch. Georgina Korik. This is high and outside to Sydney Romero. Sydney's sister, Sierra, is on Team McQuillan this week. Called strike two and two. When it's actually sorry two and one. Uh, their mama's birthday, Melissa Romero. So if she's listening in, happy birthday, mama. So that two daughters playing: Sierra Romero, Sydney Romero. Their younger brother Mikey is actually lighting it up right now in the Boston Red Sox organization. It was a first round pick a couple of years ago. I think he's had three two home run games in the last month. Wow. Crazy. Maybe call up here soon. Uh, yeah. He's still a ways away, but yeah. yeah, he's big time prospect. Mikey Romero. Get that down. Three balls and two strikes. High pop. Will the win be a factor? Great catch made by Morgan DeBoard. Handcuffed, still able to make the play, and the side is retired. Big throw by Sasha Palacios, throwing out Victoria Hayward at third at second base. A four to one lead for Team Palacios. They won the first and the second inning. This uh, fourth inning is actually going to be a double inning. Whoever wins this inning, Team Palacios or Team Kilfoyle, will win plus 20 points. Leaderboard updates all the time, and we've had a change atop the leaderboard. Lexi Kilfoyle has leapfrogged over Amanda Lorenz. She's currently in the top spot. Of course, Amanda Lorenz hasn't played. She will captain our second game today. So Kilfoyle's given up three earned runs. That's negative 30, but she's also got nine outs. Every out is a plus four, so nine times four, 36. So on her day, she's a plus six, and that's enough to move into first place. Carly Spade bats for the second time. 
Spade came on in the second inning and laced a single to right field. Got everyone in the building excited. She is Chicago's own. Went to high school in the city at Lane Tech. Fouls that one off her foot. It'll be Spade and then the top of the order, Aubrey Leach and Sis Bates. It's a good chance right now for Team Palacios. Combination of Spade, Leach, and Bates are a combined five for five. Off the thumbs, that's gonna fall. Back to back base hits for Spade. Didn't have a hit through the first two weeks, but she's got two hits in our first four innings today. Get closer to the action with your free unlimited club membership. Vote on game MVPs, compete in the AU Fantasy League for exclusive prizes and more. Sign up now at auprosoftball.com. So 9-1-2 in the order for Team Palacios, a combined six for six, two times through the lineup. Off the end of the bat, 0-1 to Leach. Leach has been the quintessential leadoff hitter in our game. First inning, she got to a full count, got herself a double. In the second inning, got to a full count, got herself a base hit. So she's seen a touch, bunch of pitches. She's allowed everyone in the dugout get a feel for Lexi Kilfoyle and eventually reach base. Well, when she gets two strikes against her, she doesn't hit the panic button. She's really good at having that solid eye, works the count well, fouls off a lot of pitches. Aubrey Leach, one of the best to ever play for the Tennessee Lady Vols. Hey, there's Karen Weekly. Karen Weekly in the house, watching one of her former players, Aubrey Leach. Aubrey was actually on the coaching staff last couple of years. Natalie Poole's also in the building, coach at Southern Miss. I love it. We've seen that over the years. So many college coaches come yeah. back and watch their former players. Special. I'm seeing a little Ralph Weekly there in the corner as well. And that's called strike three. That doesn't happen very often. Aubrey Leach was absolutely fooled by that pitch by Corrick. I'm sorry, by Kilfoyle. And it's out number one. Really pretty spot. Oh. Location. It's just that heavy down ball by Lexi Kilfoyle. It's a tough pitch. Kilfoyle goes to second for one. That's the first time today that Sis Bates has been retired. Two down here in our fourth inning. Love me a good field and pitcher. Lexi Kilfoyle knows right away. Probably hearing Skylar Wallace behind her yelling 2 2 2, getting those lead outs. Here's Haley McClunny. For many, many years now, probably close to a decade, she has been in that conversation for best all around player in the world. Run, hit, hit for power, defend, throw. Super smart. Oh, and two. Good pitches. It's back to back to back, nibbling that outside part of the plate, down and away. Really tough pitch for those left handed hitters.
Runner out of first base is Sis Bates. Go Foils, one, two. Just missed, oh no, delayed call. Strike three, and McClenny is out number three. And she didn't believe that that call's correct. Having a word at the home plate umpire right now. I mean, we're painting corners here, folks. Ooh, the pitcher in me wants it for him. Great opportunity for Team Kilfoyle. If they can score just one run here in this fourth inning, they will be plus 20 for winning the third and now the fourth inning. How would you like to have your chance to win a softball autograph by all of the AU Pro Softball athletes? Well, now you can. Go to auprosports.com slash enter to register. With Danielle Laurie and Savannah Collins. I'm Eric Collins. Glad to have you here. Sun splashed Saturday afternoon in Rosemont. That doesn't look too sunny there, but folks, believe me, it is. Just a couple of wispy clouds. And I am just rejoicing. 75 degrees? Middle of August? In Chicago? This is dreamy. Like a week ago, what was it, 95? 91 at game time, they said. They said it was hot up in here. No, 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 no. This is what I'm talking about. Claire Davidson will be followed by Taylor Edwards and Kelsey Stewart Hunter. Batting against Georgina Corrick. Into center field. That's where fly balls go to die. Haley McClenney with the squeeze. One down. I don't think you can really talk enough right now about Georgina Corrick. I mean, over the course of the last three innings, only given up that one hit. She's been very efficient. She's made adjustments on these hitters. She's thrown the off speed when she's needed to, but it's come down to being able to get ahead of hitters. Love telling the story. Georgina Corrick was a marine biology major at USF. I know, pretty incredible. Yeah. I remember seeing her at the St. Pete Clearwater, and she talked to me about it. It's like, wow, you're doing that and pitching at a high level? Like, you, this is pretty. <laughs> well, she didn't stop there. She's got a master's degree in global sustainability. Woo. Fun stuff. She's actually not an American by birth. She was born in England. She's represented the uh, British national team on a number of occasions over the years. Moved to Florida as an infant. Georgina Cork, love watching her throw. Debuted with Athletes Unlimited in an AUX season out in San Diego a couple of years ago. And it kind of took everyone by storm. She was fantastic. Asking where that last pitch was. I mean, over a thousand strikeouts, 1,302 over the course of her career at UCF. I mean, she got that additional COVID year. And I was happy about it because she was one of the only pitchers in the college game that called her own game, which is unique. It doesn't happen as much anymore. You're seeing a lot more coaches do it, but when you get to go play pro, like that's your game. You're not having anyone else call those types of things. It's you in the circle with, the, with that catcher. When you won your national championship at uh, Washington, did you? Yeah, did you Alicia Blake pitches? and um, me, we called pitches. I mean, there's a lot of behind the scenes and prep work you're doing with your pitching coaches, but ultimately it was a the battery that was calling it. And oh. When you think about some of those big pressure moments that your coaches are going through when there's runners on and not having any control, I'm not going to say, I, like, I get why they do it, because they want to be able to control those things, but at the end of the day, if you don't feel it, you can't throw it. You have to have that gut feeling to throw those big pitches. Quirk oh, was halfway to the dugout and has to go back into the circle. And you see a little smirk by Kelsey Stewart Hunter. Pretty curveball painting on the inner half. There is the called strike three that she wanted. Kelsey Stewart Hunter glares at the home plate umpire. It's a one, two, three, fourth inning. To the fifth we go. Well, a 
another scoreless inning. That means this fifth inning is going to be worth 30 points. Whichever side can outscore the other in the fifth inning is plus 30. That is big. Overall, it's a 4-1 to one lead for Team Palacios over Team Kilfoyle. Let's go into the game now with the U.S. Air Force. Kayla Kowalik. Today. This wind is brutal. Have you gotten anything hard in? No. Okay. But I, so I think but I'll throw like up the next time. For all of us, so whatever they do to me is probably what yeah. they do to you guys next time. Because I feel like they were pretty similar. Yeah. I love the fact that outfielders are together and they're not talking about, oh, geez, where was that last ball hit? They're talking about hitting. Yeah. Not talking about defense. They're talking about hitting on the outfield. Charlize Palacios leads things off and hits the ball to Kowalik. Going to give her a chance, and it's off the wall. Extra bases for Palacios. You just see that easy power that she has. Leadoff double here in the fifth inning. This was close to getting out of here. Really good piece of hitting by Palacios. Man, she's got a sweet swing. Just hits the top of the wall. Kowalik going for it. Haley McClinney having her back out there to get to that ball. I'm a dad Palacios in the building. I'm telling you. Youngest daughter, you just got to double up the wall, lead up the inning, you get your next daughter back, and there's like no reaction. Well, and Sachel Palacios' last ups was just that absolute liner to Vic Hayward in center. Number to third. Good job by Sydney Romero to look the runner back, and Sachel is retired at first. So an unproductive out for Sachel Palacios, the captain. Sam Fisher drove in a run with the sacrifice fly in the first inning. Bounced to short in the third. One of the most influential players in the history of Athletes Unlimited. She's been around and seen everything. Been a part of basically every big decision that's ever been made announced her retirement at the conclusion of this championship season. If you've been paying attention to either international or professional softball over the last decade, you've heard a lot about Sam Fisher. National Pro Fast Pitch with the national team for a number of years. And now five consecutive years with Athletes Unlimited. High drive center field. Hayward looks up into the sun, makes the play. Two down. Palacio scampers over to third. Okay, this is uh, an important at bat. Lexi Kilfoyle will throw to Kaylee Harding. Harding has hit the ball hard twice. Grounded out to second in the first inning and singled into left field in the third. A single here would score another run. A lot on the line with those rollover inning points. I mean, 30 points is key when you think about it. An important... At the end of the day, I mean, when you win games, you find yourself scooting up the leaderboard a whole heck of a lot more than you do on those losing teams where you go four for four. So it really comes down to being able to win and do the little things right and try to come out with those wins. Slicing down the right field line. It's a fair ball. The run scores and Harding hits the deck. And she'll have to settle for just a double. She blew a tire in between first and second. <laughs> And has to settle for the double. That probably was going to be three. But it does play to run, and the lead swells to five to one for Team Palacios. 
Such a good piece of hitting by Harding. Drop ball away. She's just done a great job hitting the ball to right field, turns and just boots it. <laughs> Wallach is everything she can, but just not able to come up with it. That would have been just been maybe a sports center top 10 catch if she's laying out for that. Super small thing, but that stumble between first and second probably cost you 10 points. Yeah, that was going to be triple. That's yeah. plus 30 and not the plus 20. We'll see at the end of the game where that affects her on the leaderboard or not. She's had a really good game. She's two for three. And we're going to have a pitching change. Peyton Gottschall will come in. Gottschall replaces Lexi Kilfoyle. It's a 5-1 lead for Team Palacios. Tough decision made by the captain, Lexi Kilfoyle. She takes herself out of the game. She's given up five runs, four of them earned. And she gives way to Peyton Gottschall. One rookie replacing another. Gotchel from Northeast Ohio. Started her college experience in the MAC, playing at Bowling Green before finishing off two seasons at Tennessee in the SEC. She's only pitched three innings, Danielle, but she's pitched effectively in those three innings, having get up an earned run. And a good opportunity for her to come in here, kind of play damage control, get her feet a little bit more wet. Good run at Tennessee the last couple years. Andrea Filler is the batter. Filler two ground ball outs. That was against Kilfoyle. Runner on at second base, Kaylee Harding. Hard but foul. And someone like Peyton Gottschall is just almost the exact opposite of someone like Lexi Kilfoyle. She's a lot more side to side with that curveball, that backdoor curveball velocity, maybe a little bit down in comparison to Lexi Kilfoyle. Still could throw hard. Their hard stuff, that curveball, that backdoor, 65, 66 miles an hour, but it's the combo of the off speed curveball that she has that good command of. Also climbs the ladder, has that solid rise ball coming in at 65 miles an hour. Softly, foul territory. Romero makes the play side retired. Good job by Gottschall. Comes out of the pen and limits the damage. But a run scores for Team Palacios. They lead five to one. Five to one, Team Palacios leading Team Kilfoyle. Tim Palacio scored one run at the top of this fifth inning. So if they could put a zero on the board for Team Kilfoyle, it would be a plus 30 for everyone on Team Palacio so they continue their shutout, at least in terms of inning wins. New pitcher for Team Palacio. It's going to be the rookie from Clemson, Valerie Cagle, comes on. First round draft pick, number one pick overall in that draft. 6.1 innings pitched on the year. Keep looking at these numbers for all these rookies. We've had three rookie pitchers today with Kilfoyle, Gottschall, and now Cagle, and all of their ERAs are just magnificent. Yeah. There's a new pitcher for Team so Cagle will face Bailey Klingler leading off this fifth inning. She'll be followed by Sydney McKinney and then Kayla Kowalik, unless we have some change. On the ground, it's going to be a tough chance for Bates. Nope, that'll sneak through. Solid single for Klingler. Second baseman, number 26, Sydney McKinney. That's the first base hit for Team Kilfoyle since the beginning of the first inning. Remember, Victoria Hayward led off with a bottom of the first inning single, but nothing but zeros for Cork ever since. And now that I say that, it makes you wonder why she left the game. Well, and if I'm Team Kilfoyle and I'm the offense, uh, I'm kind of stoked that they did make the change, and it's not to take anything away from Valerie Cagle, but you're just shaking it up now, and you're getting, you're putting yourself potentially in a different rhythm because they were struggling against Georgina Korik. She did a great job of being able to spot pitches up well and continue to get out. So now I'm kind of excited knowing I'm going to face someone different. Yeah, I don't know the dynamic, the, the dynamic or whether or not there's a reason 
but this is the bottom third of the order, so this would have only been the second look for Korik against Klingler, McKinney, and Kowalik. And you're trying to protect basically a one nothing lead yeah. because that's what the inning is like. Right to the third baseman. Great play by Fisher. Stood her ground, one down. Cat-like reflexes, Sam Fisher. The liner right at her, tries to double up, but Klingler back in time. So Kayla Kowalik, little half swing, and it works, it'll get down. Nice offense by Kowalik. Pops it just onto that outfield green. Second base hit here in our fifth inning for Team Kilfoyle. So runners at first, then at second, one down for Victoria Hayward. Hayward's reached twice, a single, and was hit with a pitch. Queen Victoria Hayward from Toronto, Ontario, Canada by birth. Played forever on the Canadian national team. And that button is foul. Good pick. One thing you can say uh, just about the pro game and for me, it's coming off a call, call in the college games with ESPN and being around my daughter's team. The pros don't make mistakes often, and you just see them make some of these plays. The little things they do tremendous all the time, and I think that's what just makes this pro league so special. The absolute best of the best. Example, Valerie Kago going downstairs with a 70-mile-an-hour drop ball, tough pitch, but... It was just even that play that didn't count. Sis Bates going over and making a pick of a ball that's, you know, three feet in front of her, and she's just making it look easy. Like, those are the simple things that they are just able to do. Skyler Wallace is the batter. Two rookies this inning with singles. Two veterans this inning have made outs. Klingler, Kowalik, both with singles off of Kegel. McKinney and Hayward have both been retired by Cagle. And now back to another rookie in Skylar Wallace. Wallace came into this game seven for 21. Three and one. Ball just disappears. All right, carousel will be in motion. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runners from first and second will be running with the pitch. Beautiful work by Kangle. She strikes out Hayward and strikes out Wallace to limit the damage. It's an inning win. Three innings won by Team Palacios. They lead five to one. I mean. Great first five innings for Team Palacios. They have won every inning. They lead Team Kilfoyle five to one. The veteran, Halen McClenney, wearing a microphone. Let's go into the game now with the U.S. Air Force. I go, I go, I go, I go. It wasn't behind it enough. That's all right. I got two. It floated. It floated, yeah. That last one where Vic scored, the not only was the wind pushing it back, towards the field, but it went right in the light of the sun. Ha! That's off, Mark. So you're saying it started here and then came back no, across the plate? Start there. It started on the corner of the box and came back to the okay. And then it crossed the plate after it passed oh, yeah, here? Absolutely. Okay, all right. I mean, you're getting clarity on it. And the one thing I could say, you don't see that in the college game much because you're told not to talk with the umpires. But the beauty of this league is these women are making the rules and getting to do those types of things. And 
for her to be able to ask those questions, I think, is key. There is no disrespect to, to kind of ask those little questions. Obviously, it can go one of two ways. And I like the way that she handles it. Because if you go at it from the wrong angle, you're going to maybe set yourself up to get some bad calls against you, right? So just trying to figure out those little things and what you're going to get for strikes against you. Morgan DeBorg bounces into the pitcher, Peyton Gottschall. And putting a point on what Haley McClenny was, her interaction with the home plate umpire. She knew his first name. She called him Mark, you know? That, <laughs> yeah. That's something. Yeah. That's yeah. going to help you down the road if you're acknowledging, hey, Mark, you know? No people's names, folks. Simple skill. <laughs> Write that down. Top of the order, Aubrey Leach. Leach, two for three. Struck out looking and back in the fourth inning. Uh, and somewhere, Karen Weekly is watching intently right here. We got two of her former players. Two of all, oh, there she is in the shot. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. What else do you want? Aubrey Leach is kind of up there for a potential MVP candidate if their team continues to keep doing well. She's been playing well. I don't know if that's because she has her former coach. I Karen wonder if you Weekly? go to Karen Weekly's wardrobe. <laughs> I wonder if every single thing that she owns is orange. Probably a good chunk. You can always find her in a crowd wearing that volunteer orange. Aubrey Leach, not only a great player at Tennessee, but last couple of years, a grad assistant. Gotchel retires Leach. Gotchel has faced three batters and retired the ball. Fun fact, uh, Karen Weekly and Ralph Weekly were actually up in uh, Washington a little bit ago, up in Edmonds. So her- Random? Yeah, Coach Coach Ralph Weekly used to coach at PLU and they had lived there for a little bit. Huh. And, yeah. Extra wrinkle we get here with Danielle Lloyd, I love it. I'm, I mean, I feel like Eric Collins just throwing <laughs> the, the nuggets out there. That felt good to get that off my chest. Where did they have lunch on Tuesday? <laughs> Speaking of the state of Washington, Sis Bates, great player as a Husky. She formed the left side of the infield with someone by the name of Taylor Van Z. I'm telling you, I thought that she was amazing. Love watching Van Z and Sis Bates play the left side of the diamond. They were the most intense, joyous left side of the infield I've ever seen, college or pro. The way that they played the game, it was just so much fun to watch. And they had that good run in Oklahoma City, those two. And I, I remember watching them play. And I think that's the most important thing for the little kids to see is that it looks like they're having fun yeah. because they are. It brings you back to your roots of the game, why you play. College is a grind. It's hard. So when you see them smiling and constantly checking in with teammates and having a good time, it goes to show you've got to go back to your grassroots with it. Two balls and two strikes to Sis. She's two for three. Call that a meatloaf special. Two out of three ain't bad. She's run her hitting streak to seven consecutive games. Caught off the shoot tops by the second baseman, McKinney. That is the first time that Team Palacios has gone down one, two, three. Tip of the cap to Peyton Gottschall. Team Palacios, but Team Kilfoyle get a chance to, to win the sixth inning if they could just score one run. The new pitcher they'll face, Megan Ferremo. Ferremo comes on, third pitcher of the game for Team Palacios. And team Palacios doing a little pitch by committee mentality here. 
Georgina Korik to Valerie Cagle and now bringing in Megan Faremo. Faremo can bring it. Looks the part. Six feet tall from Oceanside, California. She was the rookie of the year last year at Athletes Unlimited. Well, I feel like each of these pitchers combo well playing off of each other. Georgina Korik isn't necessarily heavy down in the zone, a little bit more off speed, good curveball, but then you bring in Valerie Cagle, who's heavy down, was really effective, and now Megan Freema, who's primarily a little bit more up in the zone. Cindy Romero hits it hard, but right to the left fielder, Morgan DeBoard. Just kind of chopped down on that pitch and hit it well, but to the wrong spot. All right, next in line for Faremo is Claire Davidson. Davidson's had a rare hitless game. Has been productive, drove in a run with the sacrifice fly in the first inning. Flew out in the fourth inning. Both of her fly balls have gone to center field. Checking with Savannah Collins. Savannah, what's going on? Well, so Shell Palacios, being a catcher who is a captain, is all about variety and what she is going to force her opponents to see in the batter's box. We're seeing this game play out exactly to plan, seeing Georgina first, then going to Val Cagle, and now Megan Faremo. I was talking to Georgina, and she told me that Sashel said to her, like, hey, don't let me get caught up in the big moment of this game and deviate from the plan, even though you've only given up one hit. I want to stick to bringing Val in when she was going to face a lot of lefties in this orange lineup because she really excels in that way and then they always knew that Meg was going to close out this game for him for them she talked about how Meg is just so dominant she doesn't miss and when they're trying to hold on to this lead and close out this game where they are picking up win point after win point they didn't want to deviate from what they felt like was going to set them up to succeed today as a staff it's played out perfectly yeah it's been a brilliant job of being a captain for the first time, Captain Sasha Palacios shows you sometimes why catchers make wonderful head coaches and managers. They just see the game and understand because they would look at the entire field the entire game. Went too far. Ferrero gets herself a strikeout. Well, and that connectedness with the, the pitchers is so important, too. So to be able to pull the trigger and make those changes when they need to is key. But sometimes it is important to not deviate from the plan. It's obviously different when you have a perfect game going. You don't want to pull someone out. But I think bringing in Framo, the energy she has, you saw it on that strikeout, just what she brings, dropping the hammer to come in and close it out. Taylor Edwards swings at the first pitch. Does Palacios have a chance? Oh, my goodness. Palacios and Filler collide. Hmm. Two veterans on a windy day with the ball spinning. Maybe couldn't hear each other. What's one of the things she said to us yesterday about when she was retiring? She said the body's feeling a little banged up. <laughs> Maybe the worst collision we've seen in five years with Athletes Unlimited. Fortunately, at least one had gear on. All right, Sashel. No worse for the wear, hopefully. She's tougher than woodpecker lips. All right, let's keep going. Nothing but a foul off the bat of Edwards. That 
Pretty rise ball by Megan Framo. So good climbing the ladder. High 60s, tough pitch. You can tell Sasha behind the plate, maybe still not 100%. She'd love a strikeout here, get back to the dugout, recover. Pretty pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Time is called. And I'm not sure if the facilitator, Emily Carasoni, is seeing something, but she was direct about calling time, getting Taylor Edwards. Come chat with her. Coached at Auburn just, University this just last year. It just feels right seeing Emily Carasoni wearing orange. Yeah. <laughs> One of the best Auburn Tigers ever. Played pro ball, actually, for the Chicago Bandits. Dominic yeah. color is, is orange. Skips in front of the plate, three and two. Third pitcher of the game, Georgina Cork, Valerie Cagle, Megan Faremo for Team Palacios. Uh-oh. So she had Edwards down to the count, 0 oh and 2, and then walks her. And it keeps the inning alive for Kelsey Stewart Hunter. And they're going to keep Edwards in the game, running at first base. That's an important base runner. Team Kilfoyle needs just one run to win the sixth inning. Remember, they haven't won an inning so far, so a plus 10 would go a long way. And here comes Emily Carasoni, the facilitator, to make the change. And it's going to be Sarah Willis coming on to pinch run for Taylor Edwards. Call it a tailor-made switch, right? Sarah Willis, there she is. Sarah Willis, solid two-way player, started out at Washington and finished up her career at UCF. Hitting pitcher, love to see it. Don't see it as much anymore. She's got the oven mitt on. And protect that hand. That's right, it's moneymaker. It's interesting, I, I ran a, a camp this last week. It was baseball, softball. Not one girl had an oven mitt. Every single one of those baseball players carried that oven mitt in their back pocket. <laughs> Guess what, we did not do sliding one time at camp. I'm like, guys, I mean, you're only 11 years old. What's, your parents spent 70 bucks on that? Come on. There's no way those things cost 70 bucks. Oh my God, with the designs, one of them had an alien on it. I'm like. Oh my goodness. I, I'm not lying, the way I grew up, it would have truly been an oven mitt. There's no way anyone would have spent $70. It would have been going oh, yeah. to the kitchen and get an oven mitt, and that's what you're using. Yeah. Huh. I always wonder, like, is there a regulation for how long it can be? <laughs> like, can you have it, like, the length of, like, a, a high life hey, system? Yeah. I say the same thing about the Evo shields they wear on their elbow when they get hit with the ball. That thing is dangling over the plate. How far is that Evo shield allowed to be off the elbow? I don't know. I'm a big believer. I've said it for years. It's never going to change. If you get hit on padding, it should just be a ball. If you're wearing padding and you get hit, stay in the box. I mean, I hear you, but I like that they protect the elbow. Oh, well, <laughs> sure. Be protected if you want, but just don't take your base. Some may disagree. If it doesn't hurt, you don't get a base. That's the whole point. Yeah. No? All right. Stuart Hunter takes a called strike, two and one. One of the most professional hitters in the pro game. Kelsey Stewart Hunter trying to move the line along. Yep, just gonna make Faramo work a bit. Back to back strikes. Well, that's a good hammer pitch. I'm sure Kelsey Stewart Hunter wishes she could get back two one right down Main Street. Three and two. So Willis on at first will be told to leave with the pitch. Maybe a gapper scores her. 
Down the left field line, foul territory, and the catch is made by DeBoard. DeBoard showed me something today. Good outfielder. Side is retired. Framo posts a zero. To the seventh we go. 5-1, Team Palacios. We've made it to the seventh inning. Team Palacios doing the vast majority of their damage early on. They won the first inning 3-1. to one. They won the second inning 1-0. They won a triple inning, plus 30, with a 1-0 fifth inning. And now they're just trying to hang on. We've got another one coming your way. Uh, we've got a 5.30 Eastern start. Team McQuillan and Team Lorenz will start their week three. Find it on Valley Networks. Valley Sports bringing you two games of Athletes Unlimited Softball here on a Saturday afternoon in Chicago. With Daniel Laurie and the great Savannah Collins. I'm Eric Collins. We will have Haley McClenny, Charlize Palacios, and Sachel Palacios. McClenny hits his high and deep. Right center field. Gone! A homer! Haley McClenny in her 100th Athletes Unlimited game. Some people just have a flair for their dramatic. So good, first pitch swing in. This is right over the heart of the plate. She turns on an inner wheelhouse. That is to feel so good, especially after her last at bat, struck out on a pitch she thought that was questionable. Wasn't gonna leave anything up to the umpire of this AB. Wow. Haley McClenny did not hit a home run in last year's championship season. She did not hit a home run in 15 games and 42 at bats. So that had to have been a good feeling for her. A long time coming for one of the best to ever play professionally here in the United States, Haley McClenny. Charlize Palacios is drilled. It's been a tough last 20 minutes for the Palacios sisters. Sachel had a collision with Andrea Filler defensively. And now Charlize is hit in the hand. Yeah, the hands are always scary. This is a up and in pitch. Kind of looks like it's off the knob, but like you talked about in the previous at bats, her hand hangs off the bat a lot which doesn't even give room for the knob to be visible whatsoever. So that bottom part of her hand is what got the best of that. That hurts. Yeah, folks, if you're going to be with us the entire weekend, and why wouldn't you? We will have the answer uh, to that. We've literally got the best softball sideline reporter uh, in the game today. Savannah Collins is going to find out about that way that Charlize holds the bat with her hand wrapped around the knob. Find out why she does that. Squaring to button, popping it up. Caught at first base by Stuart Hunter. So kind of a gift out. There is now one out. And the star so far in the seventh inning for Team Palacios, Haley McClenny is standing by with Savannah. Haley, last at bat to have a strikeout call that you're trying to get some answers on and then first pitch to jump on that one. Talk me through the adjustment from one AB to the next. Yeah, you can't strike out if you don't get to two strikes, right? So <laughs> I wanted to be a little bit more aggressive. I know Peyton's such a good pitcher. She attacks the zone. Um, and I just felt like I would be on time if I swung at the first one. And luckily she left it a little bit over the white and the wind's blowing out today. So thank God for that. Wind was in your favor. Yeah. Thanks, Halo. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sam Fisher is the batter. 0-2 to Fisher. She's not wrong. You can't strike out if you don't get I love two that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big believer in karma. And Haley had karma on her side. She disagreed with the call early in the game. She respectfully talked to the umpire. Somewhere the softball god said, you know what? We owe you one. Pitch. Peyton Gotchel. Came on back in the fifth inning to retire Andrea Filler. At a 1-2-3-6 inning, this is going to be trouble. 
Oh, making a nice play, looking up into that afternoon sun, Kayla Kowalik, two down. Kayla Kowalik, she's getting challenged this game. She's had a lot of balls her way, wind swirling around, all these outies have had to work. Yeah, folks, most ballparks have the orientation of facing northeast. And that means that late in the afternoon with the setting sun, the right side of the infield and the right fielder are always looking into the sun. Kowalik understands. That's why she's got the sunglasses on and she's played right field professionally very well today. One last thing about ballpark orientation. Tell me. Uh, pitchers, when they're staring straight into home plate, their left arm is hanging directly to the south if the ballpark has the proper orientation to the northeast. That's the term southpaw. It started because of the orientation of the field and the way the pitcher's arm faces. Faces south, they're a southpaw. Gotchel, of course, is messing this up, and she's a right-hander. But Harding hits this one deep to left field, but the ballpark will hold it. Catch is made on the warning track by Claire Davidson, but damage done. Home run by Haley McClenney expands the lead for Team Palacios to five. Unlimited Pro Softball is fueled by Gatorade. Week three started down in Greenville, North Carolina. Little League Softball World Series. Athletes Unlimited a part of it for the second consecutive year. Games got washed out. First game was halted and second game never got started. But still, you talk to any of the 60 players, it was a successful trip just because of the interactions, the opportunities they had with the Little Leaguers. And that's first and foremost, getting to connect with those little kids and just hear the stories, share the stories, I think are so important. It stinks that they didn't get to see those games go through. Hurricane Deb, no bueno, but still a successful trip in the sense where they got to chatting. Oh, it's a big opportunity. Bailey Klingler gets it underneath the glove of Sam Fisher. And we've got the leadoff batter board in the seventh inning. Let's take a look at the play of the game presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Well, nothing better than a Haley McClinney bomb. The last one coming when? August 6th, 2022. What? It's been two years for Haley McClinney in championship seasons. Then I had to feel good coming off her bat. Down the left field line. That's fair right on the chalk. Sydney McKinney gets a base hit. Runners at first and at second. Nobody out. And you're seeing Sydney McKinney do a great job of just going with this pitch. Just finds a way. I mean, the camera angle is so good. Just stays fair. Some more action going here for Team Kilfoyle. And listen. Uh, you want to be careful. You don't want anything to get too carried away. Yeah, it's six to one, but heading back up to the top of the lineup here, the way they've been swinging it. Sexy would be smart just to lay down a bunt maybe here for Kowalik. She could get some points. It will put runners on it second and third. That's the big number. Well, clearly, they want to get six runs and win the ball game. But if you can just get two runs, you'd not only win the seventh inning, but you'd also win the sixth. Because the sixth inning was tied. Neither team was able to score. A lot of different ways you can play this if you're Kayla Kowalik. Here's the butt. Oh my goodness. Just a beautiful thing for Kowalik. Infield base hit. That's now three straight singles for Team Kilfoyle. Well, to me, it's more so the pitch that she's choosing to bunt. This is an off speed pitch. And she just hangs with it, keeps her barrel long through to drop that bunt, deaden it right in front. Sam Fisher, it's not that she was way back. Just deceptive with how she was able to lay that down. Situationally, I didn't know if they thought she was going to lay that bunt down because obviously the score is 6-1. But situation here for Team Palacios. So Team Palacios up by five. That's starting to look a little bit dicey. 
but the one run scored in the top of this seventh inning means the team Kilfoyle will need to score two times to win the inning and that would give them a plus 20. Ramo allowed seven, eight, nine in the batting order to reach base safely. Klingler, McKinney, and Kowalik. And now the leadoff batter, Victoria Hayward, takes called strike one. Vic so far today, one for two. Single to scored, was hit with a pitch, caught stealing, and struck out. Off speed pitch. That'll score a run. There's the first out of the inning. Give Vic an RBI. It's a 6-2 game. And now the seventh inning is tied at one apiece. And the infield's going to have to play in. This is just smart. Normally in any other game of softball, you're leading 6-2. You're on defense. You're playing back. Just get the out at first. But smartly, Team Palacios is playing in to try and cut off the run. Into center field. Will it be deep enough to score the run? McClenny makes the play. Safe at home. And it is a 6-3 game. But more importantly for Team Kilfoyle, it's an inning win. Their first of the day. And that has to feel good, especially not winning any up until this point. You know the importance of being able to win innings and win games and how that can really kind of help catapult you up that leaderboard. Skyler Wallace chasing this pitch up and away, just got underneath it. Still enough to score that run, but. So now two outs here in the seventh inning, trying to keep the game alive is Sidney Romero. Romero needs to get on. It's a hope of a possible homer and tie the ball game, but it's much ado about nothing. Catch is made out in left field by Morgan. The board and the game is over. But at least something to smile about for Team Kilfoyle. They win the sixth and seventh inning with the seventh inning rally. Well, and Team Palacios came to play offensively. They were money. I like the decisions that the captain, Sashel Palacios, was making behind the plate. Really good organized game. Uncharacteristic start for, for Kilfoyle, but good thing is she gets to get up again tomorrow and maybe get the ball. So congratulations, Team Palacios. In the particular, Haley McClenney playing in her 100th Athletes Unlimited game. Uh, they win a ball game. Haley gets a home run. She'll be one of those players that will definitely be in the factor for possible game MVP. We'll get y'all squared away when we have our second game, which will come your way at 5.30 Eastern time on Valley Sports. Until then, for Danielle and Savannah, I'm Eric saying goodbye from Chicago.